Today on Motorhead Garage, we're going to add some bling to a 2015 Chevy Corvette engine. How about lights? We've got some LEDs that are totally illuminating. Sam shows us a dustless blaster. That's right, dustless. And for all you bikers needing a place to store and work on your bike, we've got a Thunder Den just for you. All of this coming up on Motorhead Garage. Hey, welcome to another edition of Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, look what we got right here. This is something a lot of you guys out there dream about. It's a 2015 Corvette Stingray. Now, anytime you have something like this, you always like to be able to accessorize it to make it more of your own, and that's what we're doing here. In fact, we've already started on it. As you can see right over here, we put some new covers and things on the Brake Master Cylinder. Now, these are from American Car Craft. These are all stainless steel polished high-end units. We got Rick Rivera here from American Car Craft who's brought a bunch of this stuff with him. And Rick, welcome to the show. Now, Hi, Dave. I've got to, already started on this thing. Now, I got to do something here with this. Now, what do you got? Well, we've got a nice uh, arrangement of uh, engine accessories. We're going to start with uh, the plenum cover set. Mm -hmm. This is a 10-piece uh, a, a, a set that we're going to set on top of the engine like this. We're going to shape it so that it contours nicely, uh, just, just softly shape it like so until everything matches up pretty good. Okay, like so. now this is all polished stainless steel, folks, so this is why you see this, this blue cover on there so we don't get our fingerprints That's all right. over. On the bottom of this, you got this 3 ink tape that'll stick it on there and it really makes it work well. Yes, permanent. Okay, so while we have this on here now, you get it shaped, the next step is to Prep it. Prep that. So what will come in this kit is just some clean wipes. These are things you can get in the store, right? Yeah, regular rubbing alcohol, household alcohol works perfect. Okay. You want to scrub it, make sure there's no residues. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. Get in these cracks real good so it uh, in good shape. Well, then you'll apply the uh, 3M adhesive accelerator. This is what's going to make these parts bond onto this hot motor permanently. Like so. Well, now that we're shaped, we can go ahead and start peeling this. And you've got to be a little careful that you don't distort our, our shaping of this. So you want to kind of support this. Just peel it off section at a time. Just like so. And then just press it on. Just like that. Real important to press these very firmly so that you can get the proper bond. That's the last one. Now we're going to peel all the liner off and put our valve covers back on. Okay, folks, you can see what we've accomplished now. We've got our fuel rail cover on. We've got intake manifold covers on. Even our uh, fuels, fuse block here is covered. It really sets this off. Now, here's how we did it. This is one more cover here for the fuel rail over here. Let me put this on. There we go. Now, go ahead, Rick, and show them how you put that in. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, make sure that you have the letters lined up right in the center of this hole perfectly. That'll give you your perfect position. So you're just going to carefully peel this like that. Just carefully align these letters up like so, and then press your part on. Wow. Wow. 
What a beautiful piece. There you go, folks. Does that make the engine, engine compartment look great? Well, if you think that's something, wait till you see what we put on the inside. Take a look at this right in here. You talk about awesome. Look what we've done here, right around the mirror. American Carcraft has a nice trim piece, brushed stainless steel right here. Makes it really look nice. If you look right down here, they have a trim piece that goes around the speaker that's got the Stingray emblem on there. That really sets that off. But Rick, tell me about your door sill here. Well, we've designed a uh, carbon fiber stainless steel uh, door sill cover, which uh, utilizes the factory uh, Corvette lettering. Mm -hmm. It also protects it because the uh, factory sill is a thin aluminum. And uh, by putting the uh, uh, carbon fiber and the stainless steel really protects it and, and adds a real nice look to it. And then we've matched that or complemented that with the, uh, the side skirt the uh, GM licensed Stingray side skirts. Yeah, and so when you open the door, you have Corvette Stingray. And here's what he's talking about, folks. This is the side skirt right here. Now, this has holes in it. It'll bolt right up to the factory holes. Then it's got your 3M adhesive here that glues it right up underneath. Got the carbon fiber in here, and of course the Stingray logo here. So as you can see, it bolts in, really sets this thing off, makes it really look nice. Rick, I'll tell you what, for what, just a couple hours of work, not even that hardly. Yep, you've got a custom vet. You have a custom vet that is absolutely gorgeous. I want to thank you for stopping by and bringing all these cool things. Glad to be you. here. Time now for Brothers Truck Parts Project 72. Restoration tips and techniques for a 1972 Chevy Suburban with Sam and Steve Flanders. Welcome to another installment of the Brothers Project 72. Got the dash all cleaned up. Steve and I are putting on a new dash pad. What do you think? Well, we're just gonna drop this thing right into these studs, right into the holes on top of the dash, mm -hmm. pull it down, tighten our fasteners. Continue with our dash restoration, the dash pad's in. Now here's the uh, instrument cluster that we rebuilt and converted. It is ready to install. First thing you want to do is, Steve, go over here and give me a hand. We've got a mechanical oil pressure gauge, has a copper line coming in, and we've got to hook that up. Make sure you hook that up. If it's done, when you twist the key, you're going to have a wet right leg, I promise you. <laughs> All right. Once that's hooked up, we've got a couple electrical connections, speedometer cable, and we can slip this into place. Looks great. Next week, we'll continue assembling our dashboard. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we have a lot more coming here on Motorhead Garage. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Brothers Trucks, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. KBS Coatings, rust stops here. Ultra Dent, manufacturer of paintless dent repair tools. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, you know, nothing like having lights. If you're going in the woods at night, whether it be a Jeep, a rock crawler, UTV, side by side, whatever you got. So let's take a look at some really nice LED lights. We got Lewis DeHaan here. Lewis, what separates you from the rest of the pack when it comes to all these lights? Well, we've got uh, some real high quality lights here, Derby City LEDs. Um, our, our feature point is really our 4D focused optics, which creates a tighter, brighter spot than the competitor lights do. They look pretty good. Now this is aluminum extrusion. Are these all waterproof? All waterproof, IP68, 69. Okay. It's really simple wiring harnesses. Um, we have our prismatic floods on these single rows here. It creates a nice, tight, wide beam to light up that periphery in the, on the sides of the trails. That's great. And you can even put in amber uh, lenses in there, which are great during the day. If you want to have uh, just daytime running lights or just running in the day, lets you have lights on without blinding people when they're coming Absolutely, you. but these are all changeable and everything? Absolutely. Looks like the wire harness is really uh, high quality. It looks pretty simple, all plug and play. It is, very simple. You got relays, you got fuses, you got buttons and switches, so you just run it through, hook these up. These are simple to install, in fact, so simple. I'm gonna let you work with Dave. <laughs> Which one are you gonna put on this Jeep? This one We're here? We're gonna do this one right here. All right, there you go. Okay, now what I have done is I've gone ahead and 
hooked up the wiring harness here to the battery in here and then just dressed it right along the firewall, which pretty simple installation. The other thing though is this is it has some mounting brackets here that we're getting ready to mount. And it's going to mount right here, take the bolts out, and this is going to mount right into the stock mounting bolts. So it's easy to do. Now, Lewis, does this come with a kit? It doesn't come with a kit, Dave. All of our light bars do come with universal brackets, but a lot of people like to have specialized vehicle brackets. So if you want to do an above windshield on a Jeep, mm -hmm. um, that's what we've got these for. They're designed for a 50 to 52 inch light bar. Puts it right up there above the windshield. A couple different options on where you, you can actually mount it to. Um, uh, also hood brackets, things like that. So there's, there's different styles of brackets and different vehicles too. So whatever it is uh, they got, you got something that'll cover it or you can figure it out for them, right? That's right, we can definitely figure it out if we don't have it available. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this plate off here first though and run our wiring harness under it and then put our bracket on there. That way we can hook up our lights. All right, now, Lewis, you know, guys will run wires a lot of different ways. Here on the Jeep, you got a couple little tips that'll make it a lot easier for them. Absolutely, Dave. All you need to do is just take this panel off right here when mm -hmm. we put the, the light bar mount on. There's a channel that runs up inside here, and it lets you go right in through the into the cab without having to go through the firewall or anything like that. That way you don't have to drill any anything. holes or anything like that. No holes, nothing. That makes it a lot easier. Under the okay. cowl through the channel. Okay, you ready to put this up? I think we're ready. All right. Yeah. You got it? I've there. got mine on there. Okay. Let's sort of tighten her down a little bit. Okay, well, let me go ahead and plug this in. Now, this is keyed, so you can only get it in one way. So That's right. even I don't make a mistake on this one. <laughs> All right, we got her plugged in. Now, these are watertight connectors, too, so that makes it real nice. Okay, let's try it out. All right, let's see if she works. Woohoo! There's the inside. We got another switch for the outside. Oh, beautiful. You got your inner spots, your outer floods. Run okay. them any way you want. Man, there you have it. Pretty easy installation. Well, folks, I tell you what, all I'm going to do is finish dressing this wire down here. It'll be all ready to go. In the meantime, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we've got a lot more Motorhead Garage coming, so stick around. Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, if it comes down to stripping paint or getting things off the of surfaces, we got a great way to go. Now, I'm treading on thin ice here. I got Davey outside by himself using one of these pieces of equipment. This is a great way to go. It's called dustless blasting. Minimal cleanup, it's friendly to the environment, it's easy to use. If you want to take some paint off cars, boats, agricultural equipment, whatever, this is a great way to go, and it's totally self-contained. We got Benny LeCompte here. Benny, you know all about this piece of equipment, so educate me on what we've got here. Well, that's right, Sam. What this is is, is a complete mobile paint stripping and cleaning business, 100% self-contained. Air compressor, blast machine, all the water. You can carry your abrasive right behind you, and you're ready to go at any location. So if I go to a location, I don't need to hook up to anybody else. I'm all set. You're self-contained. You're great. ready to go. It looks like a pretty expensive piece. Now, a guy's not going to buy this to do one car. He might be an enthusiast and want to strip a car down or do his bottom of his boat, but it uh, looks like a good business opportunity. Well, that's right. There's quite a few guys that only have one or two cars, and they'd like somebody to be able to come over to their location and do it for them. Mm -hmm. So it really has turned into a great business. Every week, we get about 400 calls. 40 machines are sold, but that means 360 people still need the work done. So you support the guy when he's in business? Absolutely, yes. We have a full, complete database with all of the customers that don't buy machines but have inquired about them. So with that list, we're able to populate that and then present that to our preferred contractor. Okay, so if I want to get in my own business, what's my next step here? I'll tell you, Sam, we do make it real easy for you. First of all, we do have people standing by ready to take your phone calls to get you to the right person. If you want to go directly to the website, we have financing available, we have all your training videos, anything else that you need. That will get you where you need to be then. 
you come to the factory, we give you some additional training, hands-on with the machine, and I believe you are ready to go to work. Great, so you know, a guy gets uh, you know, material, what about training? Absolutely, training is one thing that we pride ourselves in. Uh, we actually have apps on, uh, for smartphones where you can download training videos if you're out in the field and you happen to forget something. Mm -hmm. But most everyone comes to the factory and does a hands-on training with the machine so they can see everything that needs to be done. That's great, so you give them support. What about pricing? How do you price out a job? You know, pricing is something that most people don't know how to do. And so what we usually help with is by providing a price list for people that can start off with the outside of a body, if they want to add the inside of the car, if they want to, if it's on a rotisserie and they want to do the underside, the chassis or whatever, we have the prices broke down for them. So there is no guessing about how to price a job. So like Dave's outside showing us how easy it is to do, you know, the interesting thing is with some blast media, besides having the big dust plume and you gotta wear a space suit to protect yourself, you don't need a lot of protective clothing here, but what's really neat to me is the finish is ready for primer when you're done. You rinse it off, let it dry, and you're ready for the primer gun. Well, that's exactly right, but first and foremost, we have eliminated that plume of dust by using water, an abrasive, and a rust inhibitor, so we don't have flash rusting. Right. We also use that to rinse the vehicle off when we're done, and it is ready for primer right then and there. You don't Great. do anything else to it. And you've got a self-contained water tank, so you can, anything you may have on the machine, you wash the machine down so you look brand new when you go to the next job. You're absolutely right. So it's a great way to go. It's a great business opportunity with plenty of support. Like you say, you're in business for yourself, for yourself but not, not by, by yourself. yourself. That's great. So, you know, and like I said, I can hear it running. And I think David just shut it down. So, you know, if he can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> i tell you what, that works great. That's yeah. one of the easiest things I've ever done as far as removing paint and stuff, rust. Beautiful job on that. Great. So you didn't come in here and tell me, Sam, go clean up now, huh? No, but you can if you want to. <laughs> I think I found a new business job once I get out of this gig here. Yeah, well, we'll see if you can do it. <laughs> anyway, hey, folks, we got a lot more coming here on Motorhead Garage. Stick around. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Rev Wheels, a revolution. U-Pole, Raptor bid liner and protective coating. Easy Slide, bringing it to you. And by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. I gotta tell you, if you got a motorcycle, you know what you want. You wanna take care of it. You wanna put it in a secure place, a place out of the weather, a place where you can work on it, and a place where you can gather with your friends, have a cold one, and have some good times. Well, you know that means a garage. Well, who's got time to build a garage? Here's a great way to go. One phone call and you've got Thunder Den. It's all done, it's 100% complete, it's everything you need. And the guy that was inspired to design and build this is Steve Greggs from Thunder Den. Steve, this is such an awesome piece. So tell us how you, how you got to this point. Uh, well, the inspiration for it just really was just riding around and seeing a lot of bikes that were under you know, just covers and things like that, and really not, you know, in my opinion, sufficiently stored or what have you, because you don't, you know, there's not a controlled environment. So I thought, well, let's let's build something. Let's build a bike garage. And so, you know, I basically came up with Thunder Den, um, which has not only a place to store your bike, but it has, you know, a lift where you can work on your bike. And we put a lot of amenities into it, um, air compressors and things like that, that, that allows you to work on your bike. And not only that, it does, I mean, it is a, it is a controlled environment. We offer an AC unit with it. Right. Uh, it's, it's well insulated, so there's, as far as condensation on your bike, you know, it's, that's not going to happen. Got some neat siding on it that you said was like warrantied for 50 years? Yeah, it's a uh, FE Smart Side siding. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got really good warranty. It's a very good product. Uh, the roof is, is, is a 40-year warranty on it. It's the best, you know, best metal panel you can buy. We can, put, we can put shingles on them if anyone, you know, wants shingles as well, so. Sure. You know, Steve, we're standing on this floor. It looks pretty textured. What do you got on this floor? It's a, it's a Rust-Oleum product. It's, but it, it's, you know, it's a no-slip floor. So, you know, when you get off your bike, you don't have to worry about it. Architecturally, it's pretty outside. It's strong. It's well-built, insulated, like you said. It's got the little air conditioner here that keeps you cool. And, of course, it's got cabinets. Now, these cabinets are great storage for things like your leathers, your helmet. 
your jacket, your helmets, boots, or whatever. We fitted this one with a 1.7 cubic cubic foot refrigerator. Uh, the stereo has speakers up on top of you know the cabinets here, with ported hose. That sounds really good. Uh, and got flames on the wall. That was yeah, good. You know, you, bike garage got to have flames. You know. Absolutely. And of course, you got pegboard. It's all insulated. But the other thing I like about it, this outlet's all over the place. Nice fluorescent lighting. The switches. And it's got a panel. How big is the panel? Uh, it's a hundred amp. Uh, electrical panel. And you know, you drive your bike in, you got a motorcycle lift, it's gonna pump that up a little bit here. Sure. And we got a 883 Sporty on here, but you know, you can put a big bike on it, put your motorcycle up. When you're done working on it, again, you have a cold one in the refrigerator, some good music, you got a place for your buddies. I mean, there's even room to put chairs in here, work on your bike when you're done. When you set it down, the lift goes flat on the floor, pull out this panel, the, the wheel clamp and the stop. I'll go up on the pegboard on hooks. We tried to outfit it for anything you know anyone would need for their bike. And how big is this dimensionally? It's a 10 wide by 16. 10 wide by 16 long. You know, it's a great place. And what else do you need? You're out of the weather. It's a controlled environment. Your bike doesn't get rusty and get moisture on it. You can stay nice and cool in the summertime. Refrigerator, music, bike lift, everything you need. It's called Thunder Den. If you want to learn more, check out their website. And of course, if somebody wants one of these, it's just a phone call and you deliver it, right? That's right. So all you need is a piece of ground, set it on, plug it in, and it's day, you're all set to go. Hope you enjoyed this, Steve. Thanks for coming Thank by you. and Thanks showing us this. We're out of time. We'll see you next time here at Motorhead Garage.